Hi, Amy. Welcome to Coaches on a Mission. Hi, Dallas. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is our second attempt at this recording. We had some technical <laughs> difficulties last time, so I'm glad it's finally happening. Me too. All right. Yeah, right. Everyone, send us your good vibes. So I think we're, I, let's just start at the top. How can I help you today? Um, you put out a call for lead magnets, and I said, great, because I have a lead magnet that I um, was super excited about, and it doesn't really get any traction. Okay, so when you say it doesn't get traction, what do you mean? Um, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't, uh, I actually don't have any stats on visitors to my website, but it doesn't seem to be um, serving its function as a way to attract people to sign up for my occasional newsletter and they get this, um, this treat in return for that. Okay, okay so... The reason I ask, and this is for you, but also for our listeners, a lead magnet, when a lead magnet works properly, there are a number of data points in that whole funnel or in that whole process. So I want to make sure that we solve the right problem here. In one of my very first episodes on the show, we had a volunteer who wanted to talk lead magnets and she said, I need a new lead magnet. And when we got into the conversation, what we uncovered was, oh, you don't need a new lead magnet. You actually need a strategy to get your lead magnet out in the world. <laughs> so what I hear you saying is right now you're not, uh, people aren't opting in to your lead magnet. Do you have any data on how well it converts into clients for the handful of people who have opted in? I don't, okay. but let's say it's zero. Okay. <laughs> If we're guessing. Okay, great. Um, so let's start, Amy. I want to just talk about some data points that are helpful to track when it comes to lead magnet marketing. And then um, I want to hear about your audience and who you serve, and then we'll troubleshoot your lead magnet. Does that sound okay? Yeah, great. Great. All right. So everybody grab a pen. When it comes to your lead magnet, there are a number of data points to track. The first one is landing page vis visits. So how many eyeballs come to the page where you're offering your lead magnet? The goal is for that page to convert at 40%. So meaning if 100 people go to the page, 40 people opt in. The next thing to track is actually visits to the page. And I guess we would actually track that in reverse order, but that piece is kind of irrelevant. So what visits to the page tracks is like your consistency and effectiveness of your marketing. So if you came to me and said, I've had 1,200 people go to this page and four people opt in, we know it's not a top of funnel issue as much as a conversion issue. So we have to separate those two pieces. And then the next thing to track would be uh, your email open rate, in particular on that initial nurture sequence after people have opted into your lead magnet. And we'd love that to be over 20%. This just measures the, the match between people opting in and who you believe your dream client is. Right. And if we see that open rate start to go down, there's something amiss with your messaging. And then, of course, the last one, we'll call it your conversion rate. So what percent of lead magnet opt inners become clients? And that's playing a long game. Right. So anytime someone jo hires me, I will go back into my email marketing program and find out where they first came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have any questions about those four data points? No, that's super clear, and I already can see why I don't know how well my lead magnet works. Good, yeah, and it's hard to know what to fix, right, if we don't have these separate data points. Okay, great. Um, I want to just offer another suggestion, and then I want to hear more about your audience. A great way to get a base level metric would be to share your lead magnet with your list because that's that is a warm and engaged audience 
So crafting a quick email and sending them to the opt-in page for your lead magnet will give you a really good indication of the effectiveness of the language on the opt-in page. Okay, so before we dig into your lead magnet, can you tell everyone about who you serve and how you help them? Yeah, I'm a book coach and I help people who can't be defined by only one area of expertise, confidently write awesome nonfiction books, killer proposals, and seek publication. Nice. So your audience, they are experts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. They're experts, but they might be uh, people who have who have kind of made a patchwork out of their um, own career path. So I've worked with a, uh, a graphic designer turned uh, yoga instructor turned life coach, for example. So people who are trying to bring together these disparate areas and suddenly have an area of expertise that they can convert into a book. Oh, that's great. I should, I should hire you, Amy. I would love to work with you. <laughs> okay. So tell us about your lead magnet. So I um, came up with this idea for a downloadable bookmark. I just thought that would be so cool because writers are usually readers as well. And mm -hmm. who doesn't need a bookmark to mark their places in books. And there's a fun little exercise where you can brainstorm uh, a potential title for your book. And a lot of people find this really overwhelming where it's like, I don't even, you know, I'm not sure what my book is about. I don't even know what I would call it. And so the bookmark has an exercise to brainstorm a series of titles. Um, and it's just a creativity exercise. And then I have some, you know, my marketing info or my contact information on the back to help people to give them another way to think about what they want to write. Yeah, how I love it. How important when you look at the people who have hired you, how many of them? How do I want to ask you this question? It might be more than one question. What difference does it make for a potential client to come to you with a book title already in place versus not having a title? Not in place, but like a, an idea for the title, right? I think um, the writers who come to me and the writers I really like to work with haven't been able to nail down their idea yet. So they, they have a lot of ideas floating around in their head. And it may be, you know, I don't know which book to write. There could be a bunch of books in there or just it covers so many topics. I don't know how to crystallize it. Um, and I think a book title should do that for the book. It's a great way to convey, you know, my book is about this because the title is blah. Yes. Um, okay. So I think it, I think it's just a little tiny thing that would help my ideal writer um, start to think about like, oh, maybe I could be working with a book coach. You know, this is fun, but I want to go deeper. Right. Or also just an easy, a simple way to validate their idea a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but I have written a nonfiction book mm -hmm. um, in my former life. When I worked with actors, I wrote a book called The Tao of Show Business. How to Pursue Your Dream Without Losing Your Mind was the subtitle. And for me, the title, like I had a lot of ideas for the book. And when I landed on the title, it felt like a giant permission slip to then go mm -hmm. and write the book. Is that a, mm -hmm. have you, is that not the first time you've heard something like that? Yeah, that's, that's okay. great. And yeah, it's like the light bulb goes on. Yeah, to totally. Okay. So I ask these questions just to make sure that the, the problem that your lead magnet solves is one that helps your client move down the path toward hiring you. And it sounds aligned to me. Do you feel that way? I think so. I think that <laughs> for the people who get to the bookmark, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. One suggestion I would offer is a little bit of context with along with the bookmark. So for our listeners, mm -hmm. I took a sneak peek at Amy's bookmark before we began and we may review it again here in a moment um but the bookmark is it's great it's two of them and it's basically an, an exercise a creative exercise but there's no context on the page so just having an intro page that really speaks to the value of landing on a title even if it's not the final title and this is where you can overcome some of the concerns, uh, especially the readiness concern that some of your clients may have, which is like, mm -hmm. let me hire a book coach when I don't need one anymore because I'm so mm -hmm. clear about what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would encourage you to just create more context there. Um, so your lead magnet might turn into three pages, right? An intro page, making a strong case for why the exercise matters. And then an outro page outlining their next steps and inviting mm -hmm. them to connect with you. 
Because right now it has your website on there, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's make a more explicit call to action. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So just given this limited conversation we've had right now, it sounds to me like the issue is likely not the lead magnet itself, but a top of funnel or marketing concern. Does that feel accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Why don't we take a quick look at your landing page for the lead magnet? I'd love to give you some feedback on that if you're open to it. Uh, for all of our listeners, we will link to Amy's uh, lead magnet in the show notes so that you can look along. Amy did not know we were going to be doing this, so you should see the expression on her face right now. <laughs> yeah, freaking out. I do not do well with multitasking. Um, so does that mean you want me to go to kind of my, my homepage and where? Yeah, wherever okay. your lead magnet lives, like the opt-in. Okay. And let's take a look at that. Okay. So I'm Amy's ready. sharing her screen. Here we go. Okay, so this is the, the landing page. Yes, great. And I don't see where the lead magnet is. It's all the way at the bottom. Oh, got it. Okay, so I recommend, so this is great. Uh, so let me describe what I'm seeing. So at the bottom of Amy's website, it says, get the good stuff, get my latest book coaching, reading, writing, publishing content, delivered to your inbox, subscribe and instantly receive your book title brainstorm bookmark. So I think on your homepage, this is fantastic, but we need a separate landing page for your lead magnet where there's only one thing to do, which is mm -hmm. opt to the lead magnet. And that will be the page that you will most often direct folks to when you're doing your social media marketing or other things like that. Because right now I have book a discovery call, I can subscribe to your list, I can read about you. It's like too many choices. So we also want a landing page where there's one thing to do, which is opt in. I think I have one of those. Okay. <laughs> um, it's, I'm just gonna stop sharing so I can navigate to it. Great. Um, on Instagram, I have that in my um, profile. All right. So it looks like this. Let's see if this works. Yes. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, great. This is all happening in real time. <laughs> and this is not my strong suit, but you're doing great. It. You're doing, let's brainstorm a title for your book. A title defines your concept. A title makes it real. The exercise in this free bookmark helps you hone in on what you want to write. It clarifies and puts words to your idea. Let's manifest this destiny. Okay, so I would recommend adding an image to the top of this page and probably, I don't know, how do you feel about adding a, an image of the actual bookmark? Yeah, I can do that. Great. Um, and maybe actually it's a photo of you holding the printout just so I see your face. I feel connected to you and I can't be a sketchy person who just enlarges the picture and cuts it out on my own. <laughs> Great. Now, what, so this is going back to the question I asked about like the importance of having a title before I'm ready to work with you. And I feel like you could lean in to the importance of having a title a little bit more wholeheartedly here. So if you were to share with me three, mm -hmm. okay, let's back it up. In order for me to be ready, I'm your dreamy dream client, in order for me to be ready to work with you as my book coach, what do I need to believe? And I can give you an example of that. One of them might be something like, oh, that I actually have an idea that's book worthy. What else might I need to believe? That you don't have to have everything planned out and perfect and organized before you get started. Got it. Is there any other belief I need to hold true in order to be ready for this work? Uh, that it's okay if things change over time. If you don't get it right the first time, it's probably going to be iterated upon anyway. It's mm. just a way to kind of like put some stakes in the ground and uh, make things a little bit more concrete so you can move towards them. Yeah, great. 
Great. So this first belief of I don't have to have it all together in order to get started. How does this bookmark exercise, or excuse me, the, the title exercise on the bookmark, how does that reinforce this belief or like ignite this belief for me? I'm hoping it gives you permission to, you know, try on different things for size. You know, there's, you, I give examples of a one word title or a three word title or using numbers in the title um, with specific examples. So you can see what I mean. So there's no one right way to come up with the title. Um, and it, you know, the one you think might be the best suited might not be. And you've sort of given yourself permission to be creative and experiment. Yes. So on this page, right, it could say you don't have to have it all figured out before you start writing your book headline. In fact, it's OK if things change along the way, they likely will. So those are the two beliefs. And then you can go into and playing around with a book title is a great way to give yourself permission mm -hmm. to get started before you have it all figured out and to see how easily things can change over time. So now this landing page is speaking directly to the beliefs I need to have in order to be ready to work with you. So what, if any, questions do you have about that feedback so that you can apply it after our conversation is over today? Uh, I don't have any. It makes a lot of sense. Great. Cool. So just for our listeners, I think, and Amy, tell me if you relate, but sometimes I get so in the groove of what it is that I do that I leave, that I imply way too many things. I forget to be explicit with my audience and they need me to be clear and explicit. So what we just did there was get really clear on the whole point of your lead magnet, which is to help people begin to adopt the beliefs they need to hire you. So what are those beliefs? And then how can we work those beliefs directly into the landing page so that we are indeed attracting the right people, right? And helping them, I call it the awareness ladder, but help, helping them move up the awareness ladder from unaware to problem aware to solution aware. Okay, so that's your first assignment is to update this. We're going to add a photo of you holding the bookmark and then just make it really clear to people the value of this exercise. Cool. Got it. Okay, so it's okay if your answer to this question is absolutely nothing, but I'd love to know what you're currently doing to get your lead magnet out in the world. How did you know it was absolutely nothing? You're like, well, uh, I signed up for this podcast, so there's <laughs> step one. <laughs> I've been so I sort of I sort of soft launched it a year ago when I first came up with it, and it looked totally different. Um, you know, I sort of announced it on Facebook, like click on this link and here's what you get. Mm -hmm. And I think that got maybe one or two people to sign up. Mm -hmm. um, and then over the course of the year, I kept adapting it and changing it, changing the language. And then just within the last couple of months, it happens to coincide with client search. I, you know, got a little bit clearer on my messaging and I changed the colors of my website. So I updated the bookmark and I just haven't had the courage to relaunch it officially, like make a big splash with it. Okay. So what would making a big splash with it look like? I guess I don't know. I would put it on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn mm -hmm. and Twitter, maybe like those, because I sort of dabble in those channels. Okay. Um, and I have 30 subscribers, uh, which is, includes me three times with three different email addresses <laughs> to test it and my mother and my yep. husband. <laughs> Sounds about um, right. <laughs> but I think I think everybody who's on my um, list has seen it before. So I, you know, I kind of don't need to. Mm hmm bring it back to them, but right. Um, I could probably ask them to share it right. among their networks. Yeah. Here's an idea. Tell me how this lands for you. So I am a big believer in habits over events, especially when it comes to list building, because I, I just, list building can feel like this giant mountain to climb and you never really gain traction. So having small, repeatable habits in place that feel effortless removes a lot of pressure. So there are typically four weeks in a month. What if we came up with a four-step list building plan that you could have on repeat month after month after month? 
Sounds like a dream. Cool. All right. Let's try it. Okay. So you mentioned something, and I think this is a really smart idea. Mm. Tell me what you think. What if one week every month, just as a little note in one of the newsletters that you send, you ask, like, P.S., if there is an expert in your life who's been thinking about writing a book, please send them this link to encourage them to take the next step. So we're asking your loyal, faithful fan followers, the people who are already on your list and know the value, to just share your lead magnet with someone that they think could benefit. Mm -hmm. So we'll call it the subscriber referrals, or the subscriber shares. Is that something you feel like you could do a version of that monthly? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, just for our listeners, you're not asking folks to share the lead magnet. What they're sharing is the opt-in page. That's really important because we want people on your list. Great. So do you have a favorite social media platform, Amy? I haven't decided yet. Uh-huh. Okay, I do. So let's go with my favorite first. Okay, let's we're get to all of them. So, <laughs> so I love Instagram. I've actually divorced myself from all of other platforms so that I can focus on Instagram. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but that's what I did. So what if the first week of every month, you're asking your email subscribers to pass the lead magnet along? This, oh, another thing we can do with that one, that's the first step, is in your nurture sequence, invite people who just opted in to do the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. And then what if the second week of every month you dedicated at least one Instagram post to highlight your lead magnet? And actually, that same week, you could have a version of that post on all platforms. Does that feel manageable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any lead magnet marketing that you've seen that you'd like to try out for week three? No, I can't think of anything. Okay. Um, I love direct messaging to share your lead mm -hmm. magnet. Now, You'll hear very different opinions about the correct way to slide into the DMs and sell. I can only speak from my own experience and share what's worked best for me. What has worked best for me is total transparency and being as concise as possible. So what that might look like could be every the third week of the month, you're going to reach out to, I'm making these numbers up, but five people a day, five of your followers a day to DM them and say, I don't know if you, if you need this. No, let me start over. I would say like, hey, Dallas, I have this really fun exercise to help writers brainstorm the title of their book. Would you like me to send you the link? So there's no, we're not pretending, <laughs> right? You're not pretending to be really interested and invested in me so that you can sell to me. We're just saying, I have this free thing that's really helpful and would you like the link? So what we're not doing is sharing the link without an, a buy-in, kind of like what we do when we're selling in client search, but we're just saying, here's the cool thing I have. Let me know if you'd like me to share the link with you. Does that feel like it aligns with your personality? It's uh, a little scary. That's really, I don't, I don't like DMs, mm. <laughs> especially if I'm not close to the person. So that, that is scary, but the way you phrased it makes it really accessible. So I could mm -hmm. certainly give it a try. And if my thin skin can take it, <laughs> right. I can yeah. continue with it. Okay. What I found with this approach is it's about a 15% conversion rate for me. So take like so expect a lot of people to ignore you or to say no thanks 
right? But five people, you know, in five people a day, it can just be a, a simple habit one week out of the month. And then if you think about the theme that's been coming up a lot in client search is this idea of the problem being the solution, right? So is there something you want to, if you were to use that as a tool to make reaching out feel a little more authentic, what, how, what would that look like? I, I, I don't know. It just, it's the, I don't know. It, I feel like if I got a message like that, I would be very wary and I would not respond at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what, yeah. that's where, that's what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Fair enough. Even from someone who you follow. It was someone I've been, I've been following for a while, not like someone who requested me to follow them and then immediately followed up with that gross thing. Yes, completely. <laughs> the reason I ask, and I'm going to do this right now on the spot, is look at our DM history. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, it's a long one. Oh, it started with you. So that doesn't count, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I want to just speak to this a little bit. And this is for our listeners as much as it is for you. So often I think we overcomplicate marketing because if I have a webinar I could just send people to, I don't have to deal with rejects, rejection so intimately. And then people have to jump through a bunch of hoops and it's just harder to make connections than it has to be. So when I invited you to think about the problem as a solution, for me what came up was hey, so you're reaching out to me, hey Dallas, it feels super weird to just DM you about this. Mm -hmm. But I realized it might be really helpful, so I'm just gonna go for it. I have this bookmark to help experts thinking about writing a book come up with a title. If that's you, would you like me to send me the link, like me to send you the link? So just humanizing that conversation a little bit more mm -hmm. works wonders for me. And I'd love to just challenge you to try this out five people a day for five days, and then you can throw it away and never do it again. Um, or it can become a monthly practice that you have in place. Are you up for that? I am. I always like a good challenge. Okay, great. So the first week of every month, you're asking your subscribers to share. The second week of every month, you are uh, posting a you're promoting your lead magnet in organic posts on all social platforms. The third week of the month, we're trying the DM strategy. This is also a bonus personal development exercise, right? Just doing that piece. Great. And then I would love to invite you to coordinate. We practice this a lot inside of the hive and it's just a lead magnet swap. So basically finding other authors perhaps or other people who share your audience you and i actually share quite an audience i serve coaches they all like have a voice and something to share and mm. wonder if it's book worthy right so finding aligned um, coaches or service providers who share your audience to coordinate a lead magnet swap I'm going to send my list an email about your bookmark and you're going to send your list an email about my quiz. Lead magnet swaps is prob are probably the number one tool that I've used to build my list in the past. It's fun too because you're just, as long as you're really curating who you're partnering with, it's only valuable to your list. So it's just a win, yeah. win, win for everybody. That sounds like a lot of fun and I can already think of people that would be a good match. So this is great. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So there is a repeatable four week process to start to get your lead magnet out in the world and track, track the funnel. So we know is the lead magnet doing its job and does the landing page convert and or is my list growing from 30 to 35 and then 52 and then 106. Um, what, if any questions, do you have for me about that process? 
Um, if this isn't the right question, it's totally fine. Okay. But uh, in addition to being a book coach, I'm also a writer. And I was, you know, hoping that there's enough overlap in the people who I serve as a book coach and people who'd be interested in what I write, that it could be one list and that, um, you know, it would make sense, whatever I send to the list, either a writer, um, you know, someone who wants to read what I write or who is a writer who wants some book coaching, they would get value out of it. So is there any, is there any conflict, I guess, is what I'm asking. Should I separate those two things or is it okay to keep the two audiences together? My answer to your question is both. <laughs> so here's what I mean. As I hear you share this, it makes a lot of sense that someone who would want to hire you as a book coach would be interested in your writing. Um, I, the other way around, I'm interested in your writing and I may not want to hire you as a book coach. Like that may not be as clear a connection. But to me, it makes sense when you're sending your newsletter out to include everybody on that newsletter. Be careful that you don't trick yourself into thinking that you're not allowed to promote book coaching to this list um, because that's the, really the point of the list, mm -hmm. okay? And I really recommend that you tag subscribers appropriately and I'll tell you what I mean. Anyone who opts in, no matter how they're opting in, we want to generate a tag inside of your email marketing program that tells you where they came from. Mm -hmm. Because you may, down the road, decide to launch a course specifically around writing or specific a half-day workshop on creating the title of your book. And you may decide, you know what, the people who came in because they're interested in my writing, I'm not going to promote this to them. So you want to be able to segment your list for promotional purposes in the future. Even if right now it doesn't seem relevant, set yourself up to be able to do that later if you choose to. Okay, that makes sense. What email marketing program are you using? Squarespace. Okay. I'm not familiar with Squarespace's email marketing system, but most of them, other than just free, simple services, will allow you to tag and segment. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay, so what else do you want us to address before we wrap this conversation up? Um... It's, I, I just want to say it's so great to work with you. <laughs> just, you know, I get so much, I can, I'm trying to take two things from this call. Uh, one is, you know, it's helped for me and my business, but two, like it's a great example of coaching. So mm. I just want to say how much I appreciate it. It's, it's so nice to have it modeled. Oh, thank you. I have so much fun recording these episodes. So thank mm -hmm. you. Let's summarize your to-do list because there were a few action items here and I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Also, for our listeners, this to-do list applies to you as well. Do you want to lead on that or shall I? I will do it if I can okay. read my own terrible writing. Um, the first is to just clean up my bookmark a little bit, give a little more context to like an intro page and an outro page that talks about the value and who it helps and why, why we do this. Um, and then it was the four step list building plan mm -hmm. with making uh, the first week is the subscriber share. The second week is social media post. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget what you called it. Something that highlights the lead magnet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the third was direct messaging in a non-creepy way. <laughs> That's the great experiment. Let's see if it's possible. <laughs> and then the fourth is the lead magnet swap. Great. Great. And then there's another piece to this plan, which is updating the language on your lead magnet landing page. Mm, that's right. To really speak to that core belief yes. your subscriber needs to cultivate in order to be ready to work with you. Brilliant. So I'd love to create some accountability here if you're open to it, in particular around the DM strategy. So how can I hold space or hold, help you stay accountable to that experiment? I think a deadline works for me. I'm deadline okay. oriented. Um, and is this something I should do like 
right away. Like, I don't know. It, to me, it's like March 1st would be a great day to start this, but that's three weeks away. So should I just yeah. start tomorrow or Monday or? That's a good question. I think it would be worthwhile to get your landing page updated first. Mm -hmm. So what if, so just for our listeners, we're, we are recording this on February 8th. Um, what if your commitment was the Monday after my, la my lead magnet is updated and my landing page is ready to go, I will begin the four-week process. So how about this? How about you email me on day one? <laughs> I'm Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm starting. And then I will wait to hear from you at the end of the month with those metrics we talked about mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So another metric to add to that list is your DM conversion rate. And also your, your joy factor or your tolerance to it. Like if it just mm -hmm. makes you feel crappy, get rid of it and do two lead magnet swaps a month instead. But let's like let's give it a whirl and see see how it works for you. I Does that, that sound okay? Yes. Okay, great. This was really fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you, Dallas. That's so helpful. You're welcome. All right, everybody, please tune in again next week. And